This is my last day of six days of eye art, so if you could share, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I have to do some touch-ups on this one with an eyeshadow. I'm going to add some paint. This is actual eyeshadow right here, so it picks up every little nook and cranny in that eye, so I'm going to go over that and uh, fix it. Um, so we are going to be doing a toucan that's going to be above the eye. And we're going to have some little flowers right here and then some little greenery and a little flower there. But we're going to go ahead and work on the eye first. Hi, Victoria. You know, Candy, I tried natural beige because it looks like it's a complete match. I don't think of that. It looks exactly the same, but for some weird reason. Oh, you know what? You know what? I think I know what happened. My prepping to cover up some of the pitting, I don't think was fully dry when I put the natural beige on there. And that's why it's discolored. I rushed it. You know what? I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. So I will just paint over these areas you can see in the camera I think how it looks darker I'll paint over that with a natural beige um, when I'm totally done and I bet you it's gonna come out okay, okay. so let's just get started it had me um, super confused oh you're still packing up the house on uh, getting ready for your trip well hopefully it will go well hold on let me see if I can find my of course, I don't see my sharpener. Dang it. All right, let's just get started. So if you are going to be doing this tutorial, you want to have a prepped head, and I'm almost positive I used Natural Beige by Ceramicote. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, Candy. I think it's just because I didn't let my prepping dry. Hello, Denise. So prep your head. If you have any trouble getting a nice smooth finish or you're not really even sure how to prep your head properly, I have some tutorials on my website, creepyholidaystuff.com. I have a basic tutorial that is from almost two years ago. I recommend doing, uh, watching the class replay. It's a little more expensive, but it's got everything you need to know about creating styrofoam head art all my tips, everything. So I really recommend it. There's even a bonus tutorial at the end. And you're going to want to get a General's Sketch and Wash Pencil. Highly recommend. Um, as you can see when there's pencil marks, I don't know if you can see that, um, around your paint. When you're all done, you just go through your head. After everything is dry, get a damp paper towel. Look at that. One wipe, it's gone. It's just, I really recommend it. So, if you try to do that with a regular pencil, it doesn't work as well. Thank you. I was running late because I had some trouble matching my uh, face paint. Hey, Angie, thanks for popping in. So you want to get your pencil, make sure it's a little pointy, not sharp, sharp. Do not push because it'll poke right into the styrofoam. This styrofoam is just unbelievably sensitive. You drop it, it's going to dent. Whatever it hits, it's going to dent. So this indent here on the eye, you're just going to, don't come all the way to the inside corner. Just start about right here and just follow that line just like that. Um, it does bubble up. The eyelid does and it goes up to about right here we're gonna go a little more than halfway up almost three quarters just go around and then come and make a little tiny curve right there just like that turn my lighting down see if you could see no it doesn't help sorry but you want a little curve right where that tear duct is. And then kind of look back and forth and try to make sure that your eyes are um, 
even. It's not always easy to do, and a lot of times you're not even going to see that it's crooked until you start painting it, and then you're like, whoa, it's a big difference. But don't worry, you could always, always fix it. Okay, and then we're going to put the pupil. Have the head looking directly at you. And draw your pupil. Make sure the top and the bottom is covered. The bottom is just barely covered by the bottom lid. I already filled it. It's a little too high. I'm just a hair above halfway up, I think, of the lid. Still looks a little bit high, but I'm going to wait because the eyelash does kind of make it look like it's more thinner. Then your pupil just right in center like it's looking at you. Then we're going to draw a line starting right here at the inside point. Let me see if I could get a little closer for you. Lighting really sucks today. There we go. We're going to start right in this inside corner and we're going to go up. And that's where we're going to have a glitter line. Go right around, follow the eye shape. Right here, there's a wing. Let's come up a little bit. And then just meet it right there. Just look at both sides. Make sure it's as it's, it's even as possible. I think I made mine a little bit too... And don't forget, if it's not perfectly even, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. This is art, you know. People, people aren't 100% perfect, so don't even worry. Okay, so now you're going to get some black paint. I use Deco Art Americana. It's my favorite. And get a liner brush. I just washed all these. Let me use this one. This one is a 10. Okay. And we're just going to outline with our black what we just drew. if your line's not perfectly straight or if it gets into the eye because we're going to have white in there anyway so it'll be fine. And if you go too far, like see I went a little, I went too far, I'll just touch that up with my base paint. Got your little curve there. So just look back and forth and try to see. That it's even with the other eye. Okay. Make sure this line is nice because you're going to have it showing above your glitter. Hi, Terry. I hope everyone's doing okay and I hope everyone's healthy. Okay, and we're going to outline our eyeball. And your pupil is right there is for reference. You'll end up having to adjust that. All right, so let me just look back and forth. Make sure it's about as even as possible. I think I brought this one in too much, but oh well. Okay. 
So the color of her eyes are going to be brown. I'm using this really pretty cocoa bean. It's a satin decorate Americana. It's a really pretty color. Um, thank you, Candy, for putting. Uh, Candy's right. Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. Um, Walmart carries paint. You can buy on Amazon. Got to be careful with some of Amazon's, though. Some of their prices are gougy. Okay, and you're going to want to have some white as well. So you want to put your base coat first. Get a coat of the cocoa bean in there. Give it a chance to dry a little. And again, don't worry if you go out of lines and stuff, you can fix it. Just try your best not to. It saves on all the touch-ups, but if you do, it's fine. You can fix all that. So we got our base coat in there. While that's drying, we're going to go ahead and add our white. Hi, Gary. You will be pleased to know, Gary, this one is not gory. <laughs> this is a friendly one. This is a toucan. It's a bird and a little bit of flowers. And I have my trinks here. Okay. So I'm just looking back and forth, and this eyeball actually looks bigger than what I want it to. I'm going to re-outline it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this black into the white. Like mine is, let's add some more white because we want to make a little shadow there. It makes the eye look much more natural by adding a little bit of shadowing around the whole eyeball. You don't really need to use blending gel for this part. This, this part blends fine without it. Just a little shadowing, not a lot. So you see, I'm just going and wiping as I do it. Just wipe. You don't have a bunch of paint on there. Okay, and then go on the other side. Add some more black to your outline because it's going to be already probably dry. more white, put it right up against it, and then just blend it in there.
Okay, so we have a little highlighting there. I'm going to get my red. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much. I'm going to be doing a toucan above the eyebrow for this design. Putting a little red in that corner. Adding some white to give it more pink. You can even put a tad of cocoa bean in there. Just kind of want to make uh, the tear duct. I'm not super good at tear duct, so I just put a little color in there. And that seems to help. Take your liner. bring some of that color right around the, the water line of the eye. You don't have to do that part, but if you, if you want to, you can. It helps make it look a little more real. Okay, I'm going to fix my um, below the, the water line I did. Okay. Let's see if this is, let me try this and see if this is the right base. I think it is. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to work on the eyeball itself. So you're going to want to have the black, the white, and the cocoa bean out. usually do the eyes with a, a two and then a liner. So go back in, get some more of the cocoa bean in there. This is probably your um, easiest way to do an eye. One second. Um, and you can do this with any shade that you want to use for your eye. Get some of your black and don't mess up your shading you just did. The inside outline. Just go around. If you have blending gel, you might want to use that so that you can not worry about it drying. And then pull it into your cocoa bean. Let me get a little more cocoa bean in there. Pull it around. If you use a blending gel, it's, it's pretty helpful because this acrylic dries so fast. So just go around and pull all that black just partially in, not very far, just a little bit. Do it all the way around. Okay, and grab your white. Just do a couple of dots around it, or you could do four big ones. But way it work. Wipe off your brush. You don't have to wet it. Just wipe it off and then go around 
like it's a sun in between the pupil and the outline of the iris. Just like that. If you see you have too much white, go in and grab some of your cocoa bean. Put a few little dots everywhere and go around again. That is the quick, the quickest and the most simplest way to do an eyeball. Of course, if you really want to, you know, practice and stuff, you do what I did. But you know, you you'll want to get your like a little um, petite spotter. This is a size 20. That's really, really. Um, see how small that is. You could get in there and get some really nice little lines. Um, you could really detail it a whole bunch more, but this is a very simple way and it looks natural. I think, you know, it looks pretty good. So now you're gonna want to do a highlight. You can use your outliner or you can use your, your petite spotter. Um, I have two that I really like. One's a size 10 and one's a 20. And they're petite spotters. So I'm gonna use the 10 a steady hand with me today. Um, you know what, Tracy, the best thing for if your hand is not steady, just make sure you use your pinky. Hold it like you're writing a pencil and use your pinky as a balancer and a steadier. It will help you a lot. Um, something I do, and I've mentioned it quite a few times on my lives, um, if I'm having trouble doing a steady line, or if I'm doing a long line, I'll actually take in a breath. Oh, thank you, Gary. I'll take in a breath and um, I will slowly blow out my mouth as I'm doing the line. So it's, I just steady myself like this, and then I take a breath in, and then blow out as I do it. Wow. I tell you, I have so much more control doing it that way. So I would give it a try um, and see how you do. And avoid coffee before you paint you know, the caffeine. <laughs> okay, so let's do a highlight. We can take just a little bit of white, just a little white. Picture the eyeball as a clock, so between 10 and 11. We're going to do like a little zigzag, very short, and then it tapers into a point, a semi point. Okay, let me get super close. Wow, that's really close. <laughs> okay, between 10 and 11. Don't have a blob of paint on the tip either. You know, dab it on your hand. I do that often, or paper just so you don't have that blob. If you don't have enough, go back in. And between 10 and 11, we're just gonna go zigzag and then tiny, just kinda like to make it smaller. Now between four and 5 p.m., let's do a dot. This is partially in the pupil and partially in the iris. Okay. Oh, thank you, Gary. I appreciate that. I try. I try my best to uh, explain how to do this stuff. So next, what we're going to do while this is drying, we're going to go in and we're going to take some, no, not that one, sorry. We're going to take some Ceramicote Rosy Beige. This is what's giving us this color above the, um, glitter. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's much, it's lighter than the skin tone. It's a very natural looking color for the eyeshadow. So we're going to take a number two. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. I am addicted to Dr. Pepper. However, I'll go on phases where I quit drinking soda because I just gained too much weight. But when I drink soda, it's Dr. Pepper ever since I was a young girl. 
My husband hates it. He said it tastes like cough syrup. Okay. So, and turn your head. Turn your head to where you find a comfortable position. We're going to start right here in the corner. Come closer for you again. And we're just going to follow along. Follow along that outline. Come around. Don't worry if you mess up, you could redo your outlines. Look at the other side and see exactly how far you went up because this is where it can get tricky. Um, you could have not enough space or too much space. And that's sometimes where you could see where, wow, I didn't make my eyebrow the right height or whatever. Um, is when you're doing the eyeshadow is when you'll see that, ooh, that doesn't look even. And you'll have to adjust things. Don't freak out if you're, uh, you're like, oh my God, it's too close. It's not as wide as the other side. That's fine. If you have to move your eyebrow, eyebrow around, you can. It's not the end of the world, but it, it is frustrating. But you could always fix your mistakes when it comes to doing this. Well, not all mistakes. The one mistake you'll have trouble, which I was able to fix at one time, but it's not easy. That's not paying attention to your eyelashes and letting them dry without keeping them in place and, you know, adjusting them because they slide. You let that dry um, in the wrong spot with a tacky glue. You take the eyelash off, it's taking your paint off as well. That's when you're going to have a problem. But we'll get into that more when I do the eyelash. Okay, so we just want to do a nice, not too thick, just a little bit. I think we're okay. So while this is drying, because we don't want to put the glitter until the paint is dry because glitter will go everywhere and be stuck with it if the paint the paint is wet. So while that is happening, we're going to grab uh, our makeup and we're going to use any kind of that you have of black eyeshadow. I'm using my um, Jeffree Star palette. Get great color with it. But my other palettes are super reasonable priced. It's just I love the black with the Jeffree Star. I'm going to go, okay, so sorry. I have this little makeup brush. See, it's kind of thin, short and stubby, and a little bit, just a little bit firm. And I'm just going to run it back and forth, to, you know, going this way. And getting that color in underneath the eye. And go ahead and go up to your wing here. Just like that. Let me get some more. Don't be shy. Rub it in there. Get a nice good color. If your paint is wet anywhere, not all not fully dry it'll show up like that so this has to be an area probably that i prepped and it just didn't fully dry the only lucky part is that um, the eyelashes will help hide that but if it was really bad and it was going to show i would just wipe it off it's it's eyeshadow so you could just wipe it up off with water and then redo it but you can't do it when it's anywhere's wet any wetness you just can't do it um, I'm going to take the black and just go right here at the edge of that rosy beige. We don't want it to stay black. We're going to move to a brown. I'm just using a contour. 
palette that I have. Now you can use regular paint to do this. I just wanted to uh, do this in hopes that I, I have some pitting here and the eyeshadow really picks it up. But if you have a really nice smooth surface, it's not as bad. Okay, I'm just using the darkest brown that I have. See, I can see the difference in the freaking size. Um, I'm going to take a kind of a goldish color and put it right up below the brow bone there, just right here. I'm going to go over all this with makeup because I'm not super happy with it. It's great for shadowing below the eye line and then above it, but going in up here can get tricky. Let's blend it all in. See, I'm seeing a difference in the height. see what I mean? If you look here and you're like, okay, you could just like kind of measure the distance between the eyes and your shadow. You know, you can see the difference. So what I'll end up doing probably is just coming down a little lower here. Help me get for that. One thing is your eyes are going to be drawn to hopefully the toucan and the flowers to kind of help take away from all that. Okay. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Let's move to the um, glitter. So I'm going to take just a firm, kind of firm brush and some tacky glue. Put right here. Be careful. Stay in between the lines because you want your uh, your outline to show. And if you lose it with a glitter, you just re-add it. But try to keep it as much on the inside as you can. Might want to use um, use an outliner actually. This is a zero, so I can get right inside this little area. Okay. Close that. And I'm going to use some extra fine gold by Creatology extra fine gold glitter and just dab it on there and tap it now if you looks like you have trouble that it went outside the line too much just take a flat brush like this and just fix it Norma's working. She's at work, Gary. Um, actually, she might be almost off work. 
We're still kind of social distancing a bit because she just received her second um, COVID shot. So she doesn't want to take a chance on getting anything. And she works at the hospital, so a lot, a lot of virus over there too. I haven't really seen very many people, even my own older kids, I haven't seen them much at all. <sighs> oh, it's super easy to get it out, Ruth, uh, Robin. Um, I just, I treat it like all my other brushes and I'll put, throw it in my, uh, my water when I'm done and, um, I actually wash my brushes with Dawn dish soap. And you know Dawn dish soap, that cuts through everything, so it cleans them really good. I have no trouble with it getting stuck in my uh, brushes. So now I'm going to go ahead and triple thick before I do the eyelashes. This is my secret to that wet look of an eyeball. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the same brush. Now, when I use glitter, I'm gonna use my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, hold on there. You gotta be careful too. Don't put too much, it will drip. Just get a nice glaze on there. Now I do when I I normally spray heads that have makeup. I don't like using this because sometimes it'll smear it. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do it when I do use my makeup, and I just tap it. Get that coat on there first. Actually, let me coat this paint. And I'm actually gonna coat the glitter because it'll set it to where. It won't come off, but I'm going to do that last because I don't want to get um, glitter in the paint. But again, you got to be careful because it will drip. So I just tap on top of that makeup. I recommend spraying it if you have spray. Use acrylic spray. There's a few different kinds I like to use. Mod Podge, High Sheen, Crayon, um, Eileen's Acrylic Sealant Gloss Finish. I gotta do another coat on her eyebrows, but you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it anyway. So now that I have this layer on here, I can kind of freely run my brush over it without smearing it really. If you do it right away, then you're gonna smear it. Okay, so for the glitter, I just tap. Tap it on there. Try to get rid of any glitter. I should have did the bottom before the glitter. this. It's going to have eyelashes on to protect it, but I'm just going to tap it anyway. And you can see where I got that darn glitter. Oh well. Okay, so while we let that dry, let me do another coat on the lips. And I'm using the cocoa bean on the lips. I'm going to use my number six. It helps you not get so many ridges. Let's get another coat on here. And then I'll, I'll add a 
the line separating the lips and all that and blend it in. Okay, so are you guys ready to finally do the toucan? It's taken long enough, huh? So, all right, so we're going to draw the toucan um, right above where the arch is of the eye. Don't want to make it too big. So let's just start about right here. And let's see. We're going to do his neck and then come around, make his belly. Come down. I don't know if I made his belly big enough. We could always fix that while we're painting it, but it's like that. Did you tell us you initially bought those pencils? For yes, <laughs> that is absolutely correct, Candy. I needed a pencil sharpener, and I had saw, didn't even pay attention. There was two in a pack, and underneath these pencils connected were was a, a pencil sharpener. And I just grabbed them. I'm like, I'm going to take those. I need that pencil sharpener. And um, wow, it turned out to be these. And I have never gone back to a regular pencil. Hey, Bobby. Never gone back. All right. So let's see. I haven't even practiced drawing this. So hopefully uh, I'll get it this first try. Um, okay, so right here, we're going to come, that's where his beaks, or I guess that's what you call it, his beak, is going to start, and let's do a curve, just so we have it for reference, that's where his beak's going to start, okay? So we'll take above that, and we're going to go around for his head and come down and just a little bit outward just a little I feel like I didn't make him kind of fat enough but I could stop there that's fine it's going to have a flower here so I'm not worried about it Something here I'm not liking, but I'll leave it. Okay, so now we're going to do his beak. Just make a curve. Kind of long because he's a toucan. About right there. Hi, Tanya. And I'm actually going to kind of in that ring right there and then come out and go straight we're going to meet that beak okay. right above this line do another line and it, you want it to curve a little bit because that's going to separate the top and bottom of his mouth. And meet that point. There is such a very slight curve, but it's there. And then right here, this whole area will be all black. Okay. Now. This will be a little thicker. Do not press hard with your pencil. Try to remember that. So we're going to draw a circle. 
where the left side of the circle is going to be hidden underneath the beak. And then right here on the side of the bottom of the circle, we're going to come around. is going to all be painted white. And then we're just going to give him a little, we'll end up painting over this probably, but he's going to have a little wing right there. And dot right in the center. I think his body could be so much bigger, <laughs> but we'll see how it looks. Um, okay, so right here at the base of his neck, before it starts going out to his body, you're going to draw a line up with a slight curve, just like that. And do a line on this side, line on this side, little curves, just like that. So those are going to be plants. Um, let's just draw like a regular uh, five the uh, petaled flower. You actually, um, you could do this with your paint. You don't even need to draw it out. Just so we have a reference of where it's going to go. And then coming from over here, we're going to have another, actually let's make it go kind of curved that way. another leaf. And then right here where his feet will be, we're going to bring, oh sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see that. Another leaf, one of the little greens. So let's see how he looks. Let's outline him. And then we're going to do some flowers down here too. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to use Holly Green, Decorate Americana Holly Green. brush and just go over what you just drew kind of push down a little bit on your liner brush so it has a thicker too thick.
we're going to take our black Um, rosy beige is on this area of the eye, Tanya. This is um, natural beige. So you want to try to do a little line. Oh, it's thicker here. That's too thick. Never mind what I just said. I'm going to put white right there. That's way too thick. Okay, let's outline his beak. my tip of my liner. You're welcome, Tanya. So this bottom part of his beak, don't have it go all the way to the very tip, just right before the tip. And on this top part, there's a slight curve, and then this part is black. Probably should have made it a little shorter, but um, now you want to make this almost like a ring, like it's ring around his um, beak. So start above the line. Come around and then it kind of curves down below below that bottom beak so it looks like it's curved around it. Just like that. circle on his eye. white. Probably take a couple of coats of white. And 
and I'm just going to kind of outline this flower because I already know that uh, it's going to take a couple of coats of the white. We might as well get it one coat going already. And just do very simple, just a five petaled flower. And your flower doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be. I'm going to do a slight white on this part of his wing for reference. Now I'm going to grab some um, burnt orange and some yellow. Any yellow you can use actually use any orange I just want to use this deep burnt orange I like it and that one is you can see what a pretty orange that is make sure you keep that curve if you go into your lines, don't worry, fix it. While it's still wet, I'm gonna grab a dab of yellow right there in the center. Kind of go back and forth in the center there. That'll be first coat. We'll come back and do that again. We'll do it at the bottom. And we're going to also use it his pupil. Just make sure you don't have a glob of paint on it. Dab your brush. Okay, there's the first coat. Now let's go to our black. over his wing with a white I'm trying to make it more of like a grayish color just so that you could see there is a wing there but it doesn't stand out really strong you know
So it's just really subtle, but you could tell that there's a, a wing there. Okay. Now let's go back to the white. Make sure you leave a little bit of black there around his stomach as the outline. Okay. Now I'll go back to the burnt orange. yellow Just want the yellow to be a little bit of a highlight in the center of his beak there. I get my spotter because I can't get them in little corners. And then let's do one more coat around his eyeball. And then one more coat down here. pupil so it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's a toucan. Now let's go ahead and do our flower. We're going to take our white and we're just going to go over these petals. In the picture, it's kind of like sitting above the eyebrow. I went ahead and went on the eyebrow. This coat. Okay. That's drying. Let's see, she's going to have, let me get her eyelash on that bottom so that I see the room I need for her flowers. Which eyelash did I use? Oh, it's over here. These are the little um, bottom lashes. You can get them from Wish. I don't know what it says. And they have, um, some come all the same style and some are different. This one has different, so I'm just using the thicker ones. And I'm going to use some tacky glue. Gonna run it right along the inside. Whoa. Then I'm gonna put a little bit right on her bottom lid there.
I don't want to put her top lash on right now because I have to monitor it a little too much. Candy, are you still there? You may get to off Ruth. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble. I do. But, uh, you know, you just take your time and, um, not too hard it's not too hard sometimes you might have an issue here or there but okay so let's go ahead and do her flowers underneath her lash uh, let's see let me get a different brush oh so remember candy what I was saying how I use the natural beige touch-ups but it was too looks like it's darker you can see blotchy <clears throat> but I used it also right here where I had no prepping done and it's perfect match so I was right the additional prepping I did for some touch-ups I needed I didn't let fully dry so when you paint over that it's it's darker so just so you know so when I'm all done I'm gonna go over and do my base on the areas that I did that but I'm so glad. It was freaking me out. I was like, oh, what's the deal? What color could this be? But now I know what it was. Okay, so you can use a number two, a little round brush. Um, let me get some white. And on the color, the picture for reference is, um, has uh, different color flowers, but I kind of like doing them all white so I'm gonna do white so I'm just gonna press down do uh, five petals so we're gonna do one two nothing fancy you're just you're taking your round like a two round and um, you just press pull inward press pull inward supposed to be five petals but hold on it's gonna drive me nuts I don't want to do six petals I made them too far apart too far apart it looks better if you do five petals for these kind of flowers that dry for a bit and I'll just do it over here so we'll go one two three I guess the best way to remember so you don't make them look uneven is like doing a stick man you know head two arms and two legs and the flowers on her are a lot smaller. I'm going to have them all this size. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're going to take... Afraid. I need to get some new brushes. I'm just use a little zero outliner. Um, what color? Let's see. Let's go ahead and do. Because uh, we're going to make the insides different colors. Just so it has a colorful look, you know? Even though we're catering to the browns, we're going to add some color to it. Let's see. Uh, Let's try this. This might be too light, but it gives you that kind of that Hawaiian feel. Thank you, Terry. This is Ocean View by Folk Art. We're just going to take it. You can use blending gel if you want. Uh, from the middle, just kind of go around like you're doing a sun.
first coat. Let's do going all around like a star. These don't have to be blended in or, you know, really good. Just some color in the middle, you know, look nice. Toss that brush is just too frayed. Too frayed. This flower too big. That's okay. I'm going to go around it with my base paint to fix that. This is too big. Pulling out the orange into the white. Do the same thing here. Okay. the wrong size. I'm going to use a two. Yeah, 
Now you may want to make these flowers a little bit smaller. <laughs> okay, and then this little tiny one up here. These are like super simple, just nothing fancy in the way of flowers at all. I'm going to put pink in that one, or oh, let's, let's throw in a violet, let's add a little extra color in there. Just going over it because mm -hmm. don't like it. Okay. Now, let me I'm going to add my number 10 petite spotter. I want to take a, some black and just go dots in there. I just not, I'm not too happy with the flowers. But I'm gonna stop with them because they'll just start driving me nuts. Okay, so she needs a top eyelash and her lips are not completely done. I need to have that line separating the top and bottom lip, but let's do her eyelash. Let's do her eyelash.
info from Wish. Thank you, Denise. It's kind of fun to make. And that little toucan is cute. Try not to put too much glue on your eyelash. If you put too much glue on your eyelash, then you're going to encourage it to slip and slide a little more while dry, drying, which uh, gives it a higher chance of drying in the wrong position. So just put enough and if you have it on your lash and on the head, you should be fine. It should attach well. And kind of curve it so it like this so it goes on in a curve. And you need to just really watch it because you'll think it's okay. And then use this to just kind of get rid of any excess glue. at both eyes make sure they're even this one see how this one went on smoother than this one because the side has some pitting on it um, I'm tempted to do a few little flowers in there just to hide it so I don't got to deal with it I don't know we'll see <laughs> all right I'm gonna do a quick separation of her lips take a, a liner or I'm gonna use my petite spotter you can use a liner whatever you'd like so we don't have that. and my cocoa bean so I'm just gonna put a very faint line and I like to do a curve right here in the center where her lip is come up and then another curve down and around just to uh, make her lips look fuller. And then it gets some of the cocoa bean because we don't want it that dark. We're just shadowing it. I'm going to move to my You could use a two. I need my cocoa bean. It is a gorgeous color. I think I was in group, Denise. Um, I don't know if you were there when I first used it. I think it was. And I, I used it for the eyes. And oh, ever since then, it's like I love this color. I can't remember which head it was, but wow, it really stood out in eyes. Remember, watch these eyelashes. Yeah, cocoa bean's beautiful. Beautiful color. So group ladies, I have some group ladies here with us right now. We have our poll pick group tutorial tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. We have Vince in there, too. Um, but remember, there was a mix-up. I was supposed to do the Evil Queen slash Witch on the poll pick, and I ended up doing it um, for your weekend tutorial instead of the Flower Girl. So... Um, tomorrow for the pull pick I'm going to do the flower girl because that was originally supposed to be the queen so. hopefully those flowers turn out better <laughs> so I just want a little shadowing here just to show you know there is a top lip and a bottom lip <sighs> don't want it really um, 
charred just a little bit. This is where your blending gel would work really good. Thank you, Victoria. I love the colors, the toucan, just really pretty. I was going to do gold glitter, gold glitter lips, but then I thought, well, you know, because she has the gold glitter up here, but I thought if I do the gold glitter lips, um, it will take away from this, I thought, you know, might be a little too much, so that's why I decided just to go with this. Absolutely, Denise, or Terry. Absolutely. Okay, so see, just a very mild shadowing there to show you that she does have top lip and a bottom lip. So now we're going to go ahead and do a highlight on her bottom of her lip. I'm not going to get fancy or nothing because... My leg is actually starting to hurt. I gotta get up and walk around. So I'm just gonna do a little simple highlight underneath, I mean, on the bottom lip. And you just take a, you could even use a number two or, I'm, or an, a liner. I'm gonna use my spotter. I'm gonna dab it in some white and just get rid of the excess. And right here on her bottom lip, I'm just gonna do a little curve just like that. Now that looks pretty strong and bright, so I'm going to kind of, where's my cocoa bean, get a little bit of it blended in. Like that. Just toning it down a little bit, but yet still being able to see it. You could add one up here. You can add one up here. I'll show you if you want to do a, a really light one up here by her peak. Just like that. Just on her bottom lap. Ah, there you go, Tanya. You'll be happy. I love doing full long bottom lashes. But I also love these short ones, and it really balances it out a lot better with the short ones um, that are made for the bottom. But I do like doing the big full top lashes on the bottom when I'm doing, um, when I want the eyes to just really stand out strong. So see, she just has a little, little bit of highlight there. This has got me. I'm just really uh, with that. Well, you know what? I'm already live, so let me just try something really quick. If it looks stupid, then I can always fix it. I think this will help. I'm going to take my outliner. I think it's going to help hide the pitting I have that's showing up. Now I want these little flowers to be smaller and not pop because it'll just be too much. We want this side to be the focal point. This will just be complimentary. So I'm just going to do little
also use these colors over here, just a little dot um, to complement that side. I have issues with them. They didn't resend my money, so I won't use them. Which place are you talking about, Tanya? Are you talking about which? No, I made this one too big. But that's okay. Okay. All right, so there's three. Now we're gonna go in with my spotter. in the center of orange. Then we're going to do a dot in the center of the ocean view. Don't make your dot, make sure you don't have like tons and tons of paint because it will drip. And our last color is the violet. I think it was violet. It's vivid violet. Okay, I like that better. There's my triple thick. Decor and Americana, triple thick. The secret to the shininess. I'm going to use a flat, firm brush. And it's all dry. See how this looks wet? This is all dry. That's what I love about triple thick. It goes on looking glossy white or glossy shiny, just beautiful. And it stays that way. It dries the same way it looks when it first goes on. If for some reason you run into cracking, just put another coat over it and that'll help a little bit. Sometimes it'll help a lot. So I'm gonna spray her head so the rest but I can't do that because I have to do my touch-ups with that discoloration of the paint there that I have to fix and let's do a little dab you should be dry already so pretty I really enjoyed doing the six days of styrofoam head eye art I hope you guys enjoyed it as well um, if you guys had fun and, and would like more of like this, um, I'll go ahead and schedule doing another uh, round of some kind of art on these styrofoam heads, you know, do a couple of days in a row. I'm really looking forward to doing Halloween. I'm gonna do a five days of Halloween heads as we get closer to Halloween. All right, so oops. she uh, she would look great in a wreath. She would look great with a wig. She would look great with a boa. Let me just show you what she would look like with a boa. Um, she's got that Hawaiian look going. So let's see. Oh, look at her in an orange boa. I think orange would be pretty much the only color, maybe, maybe yellow, yellow too, I don't know, but anyway, there she is again, thank you guys so much 
for hanging out with me six days in a row doing this head art. Uh, if you haven't seen the rest, just scroll through my page and you'll find the other heads I did yesterday. So if you don't like gore, don't look at gore. Actually, you know what? Let me show you guys while you're here, if anybody's still here or if somebody watches the replay, they'll be able to see. So we started with, I still got to do touch-ups. This one, I think this was the first day, the spider eye. That one was the first one. Um, and then we did the sunflower eyes. Those are the sunflowers. We did that one on, I believe, day two. And then on day three, I think we did this one. We did the palm trees. She looks like she's just total Hawaii. All the, the colors, I just love it. And okay, so that's one, two, three. And day four was the beautiful blue butterfly with glitter. And day five was for my creepy followers who love the scary for Halloween. I did Rosemary. Rosemary, she's a scary one. That was yesterday. And day six in my final is the chair. I just had, I had a lot of fun doing all these. So again, thank you all. Um, orange bow made the beak tag. It did, Candy. It did. The orange does pick up the beak. Thank you. And thank you all that were able to be here every day with me. I appreciate it. So I will see you again. I'll be busy. Uh, the rest of the week's busy for me because I have group. I'm doing tutorial a live for my group tomorrow, and then I have a pre recorded tutorial for them this weekend. So. You won't see me live probably the rest of the week here on, on my public page. All right, everybody stay safe. Um, have a run, wonderful rest of your week. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, message me anytime. And if you would like to learn how to do all this kind of stuff, check out my group. I have a pinned post with all the information. All right, talk to you soon.